Hi crafters, Raquel here with Paints and Glitter and I'm super excited for today. I'm finally able to share with you the Joyful Jug Die Set from Tonic Studios. I am so happy they sent this to me so that I could craft with it and share with you what I've made. So I'm going to make a tutorial for you today. And first I'm going to point out that there are 49 pieces in this die set. Some of them are going to create the side of the little water jug. That's going to be this piece here, so you'll be cutting this out four times. You can decorate it with this panel here. You can use your pretty solid papers, you can emboss this, or you can use the dies included, which are these two. This one's going to be the scrolly pretty one with all the details. Then there's another one that you can use also to cut into that if you'd like to just have a remaining border there, or you can omit that and have a solid piece here with either just, as I said before, all of that beautiful inlay, or you can do a combination of different things depending on your taste. The four tabs here, by the way, are going to face the bottom of the jug and the three tabs will face the top. So if you're one that likes to go ahead and take a note of that, then you can do so. Then for the top of your jug, you're going to be using these two pieces here as well as these two pieces. The larger ones are going to face the front of the jug and then the narrower ones will be more toward the side. You can decorate those as well. So as you see, there's a solid piece and then there's a piece here. It has a little bit of a flower, some leaves, and then the little scroll work. Super, super pretty. The base of your jug is going to be this largest circle or oval, I'm going to call it. And then the lid where the flowers are going to sit is actually going, going to be the smaller one. And then you have three dies here that will pierce little holes onto this piece. And you can add little stems with your flowers if you'd like to. You're going to create the stems with this piece here. This portion here is going to create a little bit of a lip on that lid as well. And I'll share with you how that works. You also have a ribbon that you can cut out. You can make a loopy bow or a very simple one. That's what these pieces are for. And to tie that bow around your water jug, you can use this piece here so it'll go all the way around the perimeter. Then you also have a handle. That's what this one is. And you can decorate that handle. You can also, for the lid, create a little tab so you can open and close it. And then of course you'll need a hinge. That's what this is for. You have more scrolls that you can use to decorate. You have a tag that says lots of love with layers. And I love when there's a little scalloped edge because then you can of course decorate that if you want to. And then there's also this little label, which I think is so pretty. You have the solid one and then you have the, this one with a beautiful embossed edge. I love that detail. And it says home and flowers. To make your flowers, you have three separate dies, and of course you can layer these to your heart's content. You have two centers. There's also this adorable little heart, and then there are bees, two different sizes, and then two different styles of leaves. And these are really, really pretty. So I'm going to get started and share with you how to assemble this. So you're going to start with the foundation or the base. And for this, what I've done is I've created a layered piece here. The top is going to face the inside of my jug, and that's 300 GSM card from Tonic Studios. The other side is gray board. I like a nice sturdy 3D make, and that's why I like to layer my pieces as such. You do whatever is comfortable for you. For the sides, you're also going to need four of these panels, as I had described. And for mine, what I've done is that I've cut the base panel in apricot orange from Tonic Studios. I've cut a solid layer out of vellum that I also sprayed. And then I cut the uppermost layer using that same die with the two decorative pieces that you can inlay. That layer I had colored using some chalk mousse from Tonic Studios, some glitter drops, some white drops, some pink drops and a green drop. And then that was to, of course, highlight the little flower that you can see there. And I just thought that that looked so whimsical and pretty. That's the style that I enjoy the most. But to get this started, 
you're going to want to give this some shape and you may notice that it's a bit rounded okay so you can do this either by just holding the paper like so and kind of moving it back and forth if you'd like to or of course you can use a paper creaser and then just start from the center when the tabs are not folded of course from the center out now i've already done this but this is how the motion that you want to use is from the center out then make sure that you fold all of your side tabs and all of the semi-circular tabs that's just to get started let's go ahead and adhere these together to create one solid piece and i always recommend that you do all of your little spraying and drops and all of that on one day and then do your assembly on another and then that way you have time for your items to fully dry now mine are not <laughs> That's not exactly the case here. So mine are not 100% dry and I'm just going to continue on regardless because if anything happens, I can fix it. But I had a lot of fun applying all of these colors. I just used white cardstock and then I just went to town with all the mousses and all the things because for me, that's so much, so much fun. <laughs> okay. Okay. When you're adhering these, you want to make sure that you pay attention to where they join all the way at the top as well as the bottom of course because you want to follow that line exactly and i like to use my paper creaser to help me put pressure on that because your eye can be a little bit fooled when the panels are already on there the decorative ones you can kind of lose sight of the shape of your card My pressure like so and I'm going to continue on until all four of these are adhered one to another. Once all of your panels are adhered to their adjacent panel go ahead and apply adhesive to the last little strip here. You may need to extend that a little bit if you need to and then close this off making sure that you really pay attention to where they meet at the top and the bottom, okay? Before you start applying pressure. And then just hold this while it dries. It'll take just a moment or two. And you start seeing how this is going to come together, of course. Just make sure you apply plenty of pressure. Now, if you're more comfortable decorating this after the fact, of course you can do so. Then at if you'd like to, you can apply pressure with your paper creaser onto that and it might make it a little bit easier for you. It all depends on what you're comfortable with. Okay, so once that is fully adhered, take your circle and don't forget, if you wanna decorate the inside, now's the time you wanna do that. You're going to feed this through the bottom. So go ahead and open your little tabs by folding them outward first. It'll just make it a little bit easier. Blech. Once you have your little oval inside, go ahead and use your hand to apply resistance as you apply pressure to the little tabs and start folding them onto that edge and adhere this little oval to the bottom. And make sure the gray board is facing the bottom because we're going to cover this with a second piece of cardstock, of course. So I'm going to adhere these all the way around and I'll be right back. You will now have a little portion of your jug that looks like this. You're going to notice that the bottom fits really nicely and then the top has this shape. That'll be normal by the way, but I wanna go ahead and cover this now. So I have the same color. I did spray the paper as I had mentioned previously. And now I'm just going to cover all of those unsightly little tags, but I'll still be really happy with the finish because of the fact that it'll be nice and sturdy, especially if you're placing a gift inside that maybe is a little bit weightier. That's why I recommend the gray board. And just like all of the other videos, I will have the products linked if they're available so that you can go to the description part of the video and take a look at what's there. 
And that's as easy as that. Now I'm going to set this aside while it dries and let's move on to what's going to be the top. You're going to have two large pieces that look like this. And you can tell that there's a tab here, a tab at the bottom, on the other side as well. You have your layering pieces and then there are two smaller ones. I've gone ahead and decorated the layers the same way using the Nouveau Chalk Mousse. I'm going to go ahead and decorate these first as well. And as you can tell, I did the same layering, which was to add a layer of vellum and then the decorative layer on top decorated with Nouveau Drops. And this is another shape that's going to be semi-rounded. So you may want to hold on to it as it dries. You'll notice that the layer fits really nicely right in the center, but you don't want this to be flat. Once your layers are applied, go ahead and adhere these pieces together. You can now adhere the two sides to the front pieces here. Lastly, what you'll do is apply adhesive only to the tab portion here on the back. And there's a score line to help guide you there so that you can overlap these two pieces and adhere those together as well. You can now determine what's going to be the front and what's going to be the back of your little water jug. According to what you choose, you're going to place your little piece here on top feeding in the little tabs and then you're going to adhere those tabs onto the inside make sure that you match the seam lines so the front seam line should be continuous all the way from the top to the bottom so you may want to start adhering these little bit by little bit so i'm going to match my seams and then apply my little tab I'm going to move around in a circle. Okay, so here in the same manner, you want to make sure you're matching up that line so that the seam is continuous on the sides. Okay, now that I have those three tabs adhered, I'm going to repeat the same steps on the other three facing the front, applying the adhesive there. I'm going to continue now with the back. So again, I'm going to feed in the little tabs toward the inside very gently, making sure that my seams match. So this time around, I'm going to focus on this one. The one thing I can tell you when you're making a 3D make is that sometimes the paper has the tendency to pull away because you're going against the grain of what the paper normally would do. But if you're patient, you can just hold it in place until it adheres fully. And then that's how you can get a nice seam without a bunch of different gaps all over your project. Lastly, I'll do the last three little tabs here. Okay, you should now have your completed little water jug for the most part. And you can see that this is all nice and even all the way around. You now have this nice long strip. As you can see, I've already placed the decorative layer on it. This is going to create the handle for your jug. Now, I did place Nouveau Drops on mine, and I wish I had waited. <laughs> However, I'm still going to apply it. What I'm going to advise is that you definitely use a paper creaser here and start giving this shape. 
So start from the center out always. This will avoid you ripping your paper. Same here. Okay. And that's just to give that paper some flexibility there. This is going to adhere on the back of the water jug starting at the bottom. This is where I'm going to apply mine. And then you can curve it. The way to curve it is to face the top toward the inside like so. Now there's another strip here that will decorate the middle of this. So it's up to you whether you want to place that on there first or if you want to place it after. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to place that little strip on there before I place the handle. And that's this piece here. There is the die in the set for this. So in the same manner, go ahead and give this some shape. You're going to notice that there's a tiny, tiny little embossed dot on this. And that's going to indicate the center of the front where it should apply. And this is going to go all the way around and overlap in the back. So I'm, and I'm going to place that little dot right in the middle here. I'm going to center this really nicely. And this is why I wanted to do this now. And of course, you could substitute this for a ribbon if you'd like to. Walk your way all the way around. I'm pulling on it very gently as I apply pressure on that. Okay, now directing my attention again to the back of the jar, or jug, I should say. I'm again going to apply this toward the bottom. And wherever you feel comfortable, I would say right about where the decorative portion ends is where I kind of want to curl this back. And I am going to apply it right on the center of that seam. And on this part, I'm actually going to apply adhesive right on the seam. And then curl my handle and face it right onto that edge. And apply pressure there. Another option that you have is to actually adhere this portion down farther. That is really a matter of personal preference. I kind of like it like this. To make a bow for your little water jug, you do have some options here. With this larger die, you can create a longer little tail for your bow. Then, of course, there's a smaller one, and you can use these together if you'd like to. You can put one on top of the other in contrasting colors or in the same, and you can even curl the ends. And then there's this die here. You're going to notice that it does create a little bit of a wider portion here in the center, of course, and that is to make this look like a little bow. And if you want to make a double bow, then all you have to do is adhere these together. You're going to notice that there's some little score marks here. So the way that you can overlap this, if you'd like to, is to overlap one on top of the other, reaching the second score line first. And just press down on that. And of course, the size is going to be up to your preference. Adhere the second little bow by only reaching the first score line. And you're going to notice that one end will have the two score lines and the other one will not. So just be mindful of that. You can then take your paper creaser and holding on to that little center portion, give this paper a curl from the center out. This will keep you from ripping the paper that to both if you want to make a double bow and then you're going to join these in the center overlapping them and there is a little score line of course as I mentioned so that makes it a little bit easier for you to know where to adhere it and then once you have this little loop you can adhere it to the back of the bow by just placing a little drop of adhesive right there in the center and then pinching these together you want to make sure that both 
of your little loops are the same size. So you adjust that accordingly. And just be careful how firmly you press on that paper creaser because depending on the paper that you use, it may separate as mine has done there. This is just some regular cardstock that I have on hand. So here I'm going to overlap it again. And you can overlap it to the second score line if you happen to have it adhered in that fashion. And then again, place a little adhesive in the center and press this down. You now have two pieces that have the double loops that you can adhere one on top of the other, just like that. And layer your little bow together. And you do have another piece that you can cut out with this little die. It has two score lines, and that's going to help you finish off the center of your bow so that you don't see the little seam. Place adhesive in the center. Place the middle portion of that little paper. And then fold using the score lines. And you're going to overlap this on the back to get you started. You can pinch on that paper and then overlap the second little tab. And the thickness of this, of course, is going to depend on the type of paper that you've chosen to use. But hang on to that for a moment while it dries. And now you can start shaping this. And if you'd like to, you can use a marker or a pen, anything like that, so that you get some nice little loops there. Give it a nice rounded shape. Then, of course, you can put this on top of the little tail. And then you can adhere this onto the front of the jug. If not, you can opt to just use the little ribbon portion here or the little bow and then apply that directly as is omitting the two little tails so of course those are options for you and you can definitely decorate the center of this by just applying a little flower but it looks really darling if you decorate the center of the bow as well and that's just another option for you to make use of the dies included for this next part of the jug, I've cut out the smaller oval, and you can see it has little tick marks here that emboss into this. This is going to indicate the front and back of this little portion because it does create a little lid. After all, this is a little gift box. And then you're going to see a little die in your set that will allow you to cut little holes into this. And that's because this is where you will insert a stem which I'm going to share with you how to make. So I'm only going to add one. You can add as many as you like. I'm going to use some low tack tape to position it. And then I'm going to run this through my die cutting machine very gently. Once you have the little holes cut into this portion, and of course you cut as many as you like, you're going to have a piece that looks like this. This is going to help you create a stem. And you see these little pieces here. These are going to adhere to the bottom of your flower. And you're going to want to make sure you curl this paper as much as you can. Again, from the center out is my advice <laughs> so that you don't rip the paper. And then start curling this tightly. And you're going to gauge the size of this according to how you're going to have it fit right into here okay so do that as tight as you need to to make sure that it fits okay and then that should help and it does so you can see that there the paintbrush is the way to go <laughs> so i'm going to actually hold that right there it's actually going to help me and 
Okay, now you have that piece that you can insert into this bottom. You can also apply a little drop of adhesive here and then cover it up with a larger circle, which you can cut using another die included in your set. So it's nice and clean. Okay. Now this is going to have the little notches that you want to be mindful or are going to face the front and the back, but you can now adhere the little flowers as you like. So I'm going to open this because this is going to help me, of course, attach my little flower onto that stem. So on here, again, I'm going to apply some adhesive. I'm using hot glue for the sake of time, but of course you can use liquid adhesive and I'm just going to place my little flower on top and I'm going to give it a little bit of a tilt because this is how I want it to look. And then I'm just matching up my little leaves onto the back of that flower. Okay. And that flower, by the way, was super easy to make. You just cut your petals using the largest die. In this case, I have three. If you happen to have a piece of foam or a flower shaping tool, then they tend to come with these. And of course, I'm going to link the one from Tonic Studios. Hopefully, it's still available at the time of this video. But just take the rounded tip of your tool. And all you have to do is press onto that paper. This is pearlescent card from Tonic Studios. The other papers are just craft perfect paper that I have colored using Nouveau Mousse. This I also colored a little bit in the center, and then I also added a little bit of uh, mica mist. <laughs> so I like to make my flowers really shiny and pretty. So that's all you have to do is just press onto that. And then you shape these the way that you like. If you like them for, with the petals facing the other way, of course you can do that. There's no wrong way. Once you have your flowers shaped, you can add adhesive. I'm just going to layer them. Okay. And you can open these up if it makes it easier. Apply your adhesive in the center. And then just overlap them so that way the petals are really nice and pretty and they're all visible if you do that. Then if you want to take it a step further, you can use one of the dies included. They will leave little indentations there on the paper. I've cut mine using gold mirror card and then I did add some pink nouveau drops. And here I'm going to be a little bit more generous because I want this to have some body and you can shape these as well if you want to. It's up to you. And I'm just going to drop it right in the center. And then you can cup these with your hands if you'd like to. Make it a tighter little blossom. I'm just going to push Push on that paper a tiny bit and make sure it makes contact with that glue that if you'd like. And then, of course, there are the leaves. So for this one, for instance, I know that I want to add a couple of leaves, especially on the seam of that little paper where it joined together. So I'm actually going to apply adhesive right along that seam and then place one of the darker leaves first. And then I'm going to layer another one right on top just to give this some fullness. I've used some white jelly roll pen to give a little bit of highlight to my leaves. I just like for there to be some texture and dimension on the die cuts. And so you can apply them like so. And then you can see a little bit better there how I applied mousse to that paper and how easily that little flower can adhere right on top. For this next portion, which is actually going to be the underside of your lid, 
you're going to notice that you can cut out two pieces that look like this and they have those semi-circular tabs you're going to want to fold those away from yourself and this little oval is going to cut with two little notches right on opposite sides here so you're going to want to adhere this piece to the underside making sure that you match one end to one notch and then work your way around if you want to center it first you can do that i'm going to flip it over like this and apply that first little notch and i'm doing it like this because i want that pretty side of the paper facing the inside of the box but it'll be super easy because you're just following your way around by the next little tab and then adhere that right to the edge and then work your way around this is not something that you'll want to do flat on a table you really want to make sure that you're working that curve and then do the same on the other two going all the way around and applying pressure to the tab and then the last one once you have adhered this it should look like this so if you see it's almost like a little pocket there so that's the look you're going for okay because you're going to start curving this in a moment okay so go ahead and apply the other one to the opposite end making sure that you do the same thing so if you need to use a pencil to mark this you can go ahead and do that first just kind of guide yourself with maybe the line on your table and then that way you can mark right on there where the opposite little tab is going to go because again the notches are on these sides here you can do that and then place your little semicircular tab there first so i'll be back once these are all adhered to complete this little portion here you're going to be using this die to cut out a couple of these little tabs so you see here and then this die to cut out a hinge take one of the little tabs and fold along the score line and you're going to adhere that to the underside of where the little notch is making sure that that fold line is toward the edge okay so it should look like that and then on the other side where the other little notch is you can adhere the little tab make sure the fold line faces the outside also so you're going to adhere it right underneath and just make sure you only add adhesive up to the fold line and then match that up with that edge and then you're actually going to adhere the bottom portion where you place these two little sides you're going to guide yourself with the little notches as well and then with your fingers just gently press so that this domes downward making sure this is facing the bottom and then here adhere this right on top so i'm going to apply adhesive here first i'm going to place this one right on top again matching those little notches and then adding that bit of that bend as i'm drying this paper what i'm going to do is make sure that my hands are underneath or my fingers are underneath that portion as I'm applying pressure there as well just to get an even adhesion all the way around now you may be wondering why I have not decorated the entire thing <laughs> this is why because I wanted to be able to press onto this paper really nicely before I applied any of the flowers so I am going to be using hot glue to adhere my flowers here. Okay, I'm now going to adhere the lid. So I'm going to apply a little drop of adhesive 
on the top edge of the back of the little jug and that's where I'm going to apply the little tab of that little hinge. I'm just going to press onto that until it dries. I'm just going to hold on to that and then we'll complete this by adding all of the other little flowers as well as the little matching tab to the front. I'll show you how to do that as well. Now for the front, once that tab is adhered, go ahead and take a second one of these and line it up with the first one so that the little holes match up. And I know that little flower's in the way, but just match those up together and then place adhesive on that second tab. And hopefully you guys can see that there. I'm just going to apply adhesive where the little tab is toward the bottom. And this will help you close it. So you can gauge there the distance according to how you want this to close. So that's going to be determined by the thickness of your paper. But you should now be able to let go of that first one and open it. And then apply pressure. To the base there so mine's a little bit off from the center if you can tell it's not exactly centered there but that's okay i'm going to be able to close this now and then i'm going to very carefully just start applying flowers here all the way around to decorate the top and once i've done that i will be right back and i'll share with you what this looks like Okay, so here is the top now. I've gone ahead and added all of the little flowers, as you can see there. So the tallest one is the lavender, and that's the one that I added with the little stem. And it's nice and sturdy there, but all of the other ones are now surrounding it. And also, of course, can't forget the little bees, which I've cut out with different mirror card, and that way it could just match everything else so I just place those here and there on the little flowers and on the leaves and I did add some nouveau drops I mixed around the different flowers just to make it very whimsical and pretty and then here on the front I just took a tiny piece of ribbon this is from craft perfect in the color arctic blue I just figured it would match the pretty chalk mousse that I had used on the papers there for the layering. I added another little bee here on the side. And then on the front, I wanted to make sure that I use this label here. I think it's absolutely precious. It says Home and Flowers. And I did cut that out of two colors of mirror cardstock and layered them one on top of the other. Then I used some little pearls that I had in my stash to decorate the little portion there that would make it look like rivets. So depending on, of course, the papers that you decided use it's going to look entirely different but i went with little pearls to match everything else all of the little drops and the little details that i added to this so that it would be really nice and delicate and i will be right back with a second sample to share with you so here's the, the little flower by the way i did add to the front but this is so so cute i'll be right back with another one Okay, as promised, here is the second version of the Joyful Jug that I said I would share with you. And what I've done here is that I wanted to make a Christmas version, as you can tell. And I took advantage of a couple of different things. One of them was the beautiful paper collection from Tonic Studios that is called Timeless Tidings. So I used two different types of paper from this collection. This is, happens to be the 8x8, eight eight, and I thought the scale would be really nice for this project. It was this paper here, and also the plaid one that you see here. And then for the rest of the jug, I did use gold papers, cream, as you see there, or ivory cardstock, and then some red cardstock that I happen to have in my stash. The gold papers, however, and the cream are all from Tonic Studios, as well as the foundation, which is craft card from Tonic Studios that I also inked along the edges to give it a more vintage look. And I did use some Distress ink for that, and I believe the color was Espresso Brown. The tag here I cut out in gold card, and then as you can see there, I did layer this portion 
with the green card and then the little hearts that are included in the kit. The sentiment reads lots of love. I did use a dual dot marker just to color in what the die does deboss into the paper. And then I did add two different colors of drops all around. The bottom part here I really liked because I was able to use the flourish that comes in the Joyful Jug die. And I did heat emboss that. And I used the speckled or golden egg, I'm sorry, uh, Nouveau embossing powder. And I really like the results of that. It gives it a bit of a variegated look, but it just matched wonderfully with this project. And then on top, I did use different Nouveau drops, including glitter drops on some of these die cuts. And by the way, those die cuts, the wintry ones with the poinsettia, the greenery and all of that were also from the Timeless Tidings collection. So I cross pollinated them. I like to share how you can do that with your sets. So here's the poinsettia. Here's some of the little sprigs that I use, as well as these smaller ones here and the little pine cone that you can layer. So that's what you see here. And I also heat embossed that to give it a little bit of more shine. And then as you can tell, I did use some mirror card for some of the greenery and just some regular cardstock from Tonic Studios for some of those little sprigs and everything so this was of course a lot of fun to make i doubled up the ribbon here so what i did is i created the one ribbon with the red card but then behind it i placed a real ribbon just to cover up a little bit more of that portion there whereas on this one you see a bit more of that foundation paper if you see the difference there just that thin ribbon and of course it's just another option and I just really, really enjoyed working with the set. I think it's super beautiful and it has quite a bit of room there for a gift. The other thing that I did was that I placed a little magnet there, as you can see, for the closure. So I placed a little ribbon and on the other side, I hid the magnet in between the fold of the ribbon. So that was another thing that was a little bit different. Now this one, of course, is a little bit more heavy on the side of the embellishments so the opening is a little bit more challenging just because it's got so much going on but i could still place something inside or of course just use it as a decoration and then the other one i did complete with the tag as well so that one has all of the different mousses on there and then that adorable little bee so i do hope that you have enjoyed this tutorial don't forget that if you're new to this channel you can subscribe and don't forget to leave a like and a comment. I love to read them. So I hope as always that you can be inspired and be blessed. And I thank you so much for watching.